This is Scotty and Andrew, and you're listening to Fun with Horror. Hello, horror friends. Welcome to episode episode. Okay, take two. Hello, horror friends. Welcome to ep. ep oh my God! <laughs> it's all right. I'll. I'll what is this. happening today? You don't have to <laughs> leave okay. it. All right, I'll leave it. Anyway, welcome to episode 17 of Fun with Horror, the weekly movie review podcast in which Andrew and I take turns giving each other movies to watch, and then we discuss them the following week. And as always, we have only two rules. Number one, whoever picks the movie has to pick a movie they've never seen. And number two, we both have to watch that movie. Um, last week, I chose... The Deep House, directed by Alexander Bustillo and Julian Maury, and I hope I'm saying those names right. <laughs> and, uh, of course, stay tuned until the end of this episode to hear what Andrew is going to pick for next week. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Scotty. How's it going, buddy? Uh, it's You know, it's going good, except for my uh, tripping over my own words and not being able to read sentences. <laughs> hey. Happens to the best of us. It's just life. Well, obviously, since it happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Love that confidence. Love that confidence. Love it. Keep it. <laughs> Go with it. <laughs> Andrew, I've got questions for you. <gasps> Yay. I'm ready, I, maybe. I want you to tell me stories. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me think. You ready? <laughs> yeah. No. I've got specific stories in mind. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you're, you're aware of our friend JD, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he, he told me that I should ask you about <laughs> the night you watched some David Lynch short films. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> They're horrifying. <laughs> I, the only one I, that's coming to my mind right now, which is still something I don't really want to watch is just, I think it's just called ABCs, I think. Okay. And it's just this little girl. Uh and it's pr I feel like it's 70s. Like it's filmed on on film, I believe. Um and it's this little girl just saying the alphabet. That's it. But <laughs> she says it's so creepy and it's random cuts throughout her saying it and then I think oh. her face looks kind of creepy in some, I think. And it's just her like I said, it's, it's just the ABCs. But it, I don't, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so creepy. And I How hate it. How long is this little short film? <laughs> like a minute? <laughs> Maybe two? Okay. I mean, it's not long, but it's really, it's just disturbing. Okay, one second. <laughs> one second, Andrew. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, we just paused the <laughs> record button so I could go watch this ABC's video. Yes. That was interesting. Yeah. A little creepy. I watched it with you. I mean, on my side of things. Oh, did it look familiar? Was it, it was the uh, same thing you I, saw? Yes, but I didn't really remember the beginning part. I just remembered that minute section, the last section of her, that little girl just reciting the ABCs. Okay. <laughs> and then was, blood coming out of her face. Yeah, and then throwing up blood. That was, or whatever happens. That's it's just disturbing, man. I don't like it. <laughs> I love David Lynch, man. <laughs> he's he's very interesting. <laughs> Have you ever seen Eraserhead? Uh, I've seen clips. I think, I feel like JD wanted me to watch it. And I saw clips <laughs> and I was like, you're all like, right, I don't know. You're like, yeah, no. Yeah. I've, I've seen enough of your <laughs> David Lynch <laughs> pal. <laughs> you know what is funny, though, about David Lynch, which is, um, what's, I think What's great. funny about David Lynch? Well, there's that show, uh, the Cleveland show, um, which is kind of a spinoff of Family Guy. Okay. And, and the bartender is played by Stephen Lynch and is looks like Stephen Lynch and is creepy like, like Stephen Lynch. Do you mean Lynch. David Lynch? Or David Lynch. Why do I keep saying Stephen Lynch? Wow. Golly. Wow. Sorry. Isn't Stephen Lynch like the lead singer of Third Eye Blind or something? No, he's a comedian <laughs> singer. <laughs> but oh. I meant David Lynch. Good gravy. Wow. Ugh. Boy, this We're podcast is going start. really well so yeah. far. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true story, though. Yeah. Um the place I'm working at right now. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of true stories for you, Andrew. Please tell me. 
Number one, the place I'm working at now, mm-hmm. the week I started there, uh, the Wednesday night I was there, I, I stepped out of my room to go get some food, mm-hmm. and there was David Lynch right there in the lobby. Are you serious? Yeah. It was so cool. And he was talking about uh, they were working on a movie remaster, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then he, I walked by, and he goes, he goes, I was, uh, just waved, waved, and I said hi, and he's like, hi, how you doing? And I was just like, oh, <laughs> that's awesome. The other true story is yeah. back when I first moved to L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was working at the reception desk of a sound studio. Yeah. They did Twin Peaks there. Oh, cool. And yeah, this was a long time ago. A long, long time ago. <laughs> I made what I what I called Xerox machine art. Okay. Basically, I took a rubber skeleton, this was one booklet, and I drew like little like sketches of places like the zoo and then uh, the fair, stuff like that. Just terrible, terrible little drawings. But then I would <laughs> photocopy the rubber skeleton in front of those. Oh, cool. And I made a little booklet called Dave the Rubber Skeleton Goes on Vacation. <laughs> And then I made a second book in which I did the same thing, but I took a cutout of Willie Nelson's face, uh-huh. and I drew a little body, a little stick figure body on him, and I wrote a little booklet called uh, the, I think uh, something like the Life and Times of Chili Nelson, the <laughs> illegitimate uh, jazz singing brother of Willie Nelson. <laughs> That's awesome. And one day David Lynch came in. What? And he came up to the desk and and I was like I was like David. He's like yes. And I said uh, I'd like to give you something. He's like oh okay. And I <laughs> gave him these booklets. Yeah. And I said I made these and I want you to have them. And he's like oh well thank you thank you very much. <laughs> and he had, have a good night. And then he left. And I was just like ah. Oh. So every ever since then, ever since then I watch. David Lynch movies and stuff and hoping that maybe one day <laughs> I'll see my old Xerox copy machine art booklets in one of his movies. But he probably threw them away. Oh, I hope not. You should have asked him when you saw him <laughs> in the lobby. Been like, do you remember me? Oh, remember I, maybe books? someday. Dude, that'd maybe be someday. awesome. He was, he was busy. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to bother him. That's fair. Um, okay, so second story. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I also heard about a night where you were walking through the apartment. <laughs> oh. And JD jumped out at you and scared you. Do you remember this? Oh, man, I don't. I'm trying to remember. Um... He just said you he you had no idea he was there on the couch or something, and he w- jumped up and went, Bleh! <laughs> And it scared you so bad that you were just... He had to like. He said he had to get up and and hold you for a second because you were so startled. Oh man, I I honestly don't remember that. I'm sure oh, no. that happened. I guarantee it did. <laughs> but I don't remember. The, I thought you were gonna mention because there was another story of when I got scared with him. Oh, tell I, me. What was that? You might have been there. Um, I it was don't at know. Halloween Horror Nights, and we went through. I want to say it was Walking Dead. Maybe it might have been. I I honestly when we were pushing you ahead of us. Yes, I believe that was Walking Dead. Was it Walking Dead? And then did you go through a Walking Dead maze? I I know I did. I just didn't know. Okay, if it was so, that the, one. so that, the, I think that was the one because okay. at the very end of that maze, yes, that was the part. <laughs> yeah, it was just like a gauntlet of zombies, and yeah. it was so so much fun. Well, and then and then JD pushed me. <laughs> in front of, because he had seen up ahead, and I missed it, but he had seen one part right up ahead at the very end. This uh, There's like hanging, something's hanging, and right behind something hanging, there's a hole in the wall, and this woman jumps out and scares you. Um, I didn't see oh, her. Man. He did. So he, right at the end, pushed me ahead. <laughs> and so I was right face to face with this lady, and she like, you know, screamed right in my face, and I booked it. I booked booked it out of there <laughs> ran so fast <laughs> you know what i remember the the most about halloween horror nights with you what 
I remember how you get scared and what you do <laughs> when you get scared. Like, I remember walking through mazes with you, and if somebody got you, yeah, if you got startled, you would always go, you you get like, oh, you do that, and then you go, good one. That was a good one. <laughs> like, that's how you that's how you calmed yourself down. Yep. By telling the, the actor that that was a good one. Totally. It's like, oh, ah, good one, good one. Yep. That was a good one. <laughs> that's totally true. <laughs> It, it is. That's my coping mechanism. <laughs> do you do that during movies? Yeah, I think I do. I'm like, oh, that was a really good how they did that. Yeah, that was good. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Good one. It totally is my coping mechanism. <laughs> like if I'm ever hunted by some psychopath, that's probably what I'll do. If they don't if they don't quite get me, I'll be like, that was good. Good job. Good one. Almost good got one. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should rename this podcast. Good one. Good one. Good one, Andrew. Hey, if we ever sell merch, that'll be a shirt. Good one. Good one. Good one. Fun with horror. <laughs> so here we are in southwest France. We're lost. It wouldn't exactly be easy to find if it was really such a super secret spot, would it? Pierre's offered to take us to an isolated arm of the lake that runs deep into the woods. At the bottom of this part of the lake... There's a perfectly preserved house. Scotty. Andrew. You picked the movie of the week, my man. I know I did, my man. So, I want to hear your thoughts on The Deep House. Okay, well, last week I picked The Deep House. Oh, right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, just a call back to last episode. Uh the reason I picked it was because I saw I saw some interesting, cool reviews on it, first of all. Right. I also thought the idea of a haunted house underwater right. was interesting. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, oh my gosh, Andrew said that the thing that scares him in movies is things under the water. Right. And the thing that scares me is haunted houses. Right. So I was like, what a perfect movie. For our podcast. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, the other cool thing about this movie mm -hmm. is the directors. So I had no idea. I didn't know anything really about this movie except what I just said. Right. And then I saw, after I picked it even, um, I think I said when I was picking it that it was directed by Alexander Bustillo and Julian Mallory. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I texted you later when I looked up what they had done. And I was like, oh my God, these guys. So they did a French film, a French horror film mm -hmm. that horror fanatics out there will know very dearly called Inside. Right. And I believe that movie was either 2006 or 2007. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? You I have not. Right? Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, so... Inside is absolutely one of the most brutal movies I've seen. Really? But it wow. was fantastic. It's it's a movie about a a pregnant woman who's like very pregnant. Mhm. Mm like she could go into labor at any moment. Right. And she's stuck, she's in her house one night and I think I think it's like the next day she's going to go to the hospital and maybe have this baby. Okay. But suddenly she's being stalked at her house by somebody who wants her baby. Yikes. And she's by herself. Oh, God. And, yeah, this movie, like, it's terrifying. It's a terrifying movie. It's one of the best home invasion movies I've seen, but it's not easy to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, I mean, mainly the subject matter. I mean, right. it's not just a person being stalked. It's a pregnant lady. Right, yeah. Um. But I won't say any more. Okay. It's, it's a good movie. I recommend it. Okay. At least seeing it once. You probably won't want to watch it a second time. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, they also directed a movie that I actually liked that a lot of people did not, and that is the most recent Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, Leatherface. Right. Yeah. It was the prequel mm -hmm. to uh, the, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Cool. 
Uh, I saw that movie at a at a preview actually. Oh really? And yeah, and they they held. Uh, I saw it with JD, who we were just talking about. Nice. And they held us back, and let us ask questions. And oh, cool. And the funny thing is that it's not a perfect movie, but both JD and I actually enjoyed it. And I watched it again. I own the movie and. A lot of people, I think, I think the movie gets a bum rap, and I'm, mm. I don't know why people don't like the ending and stuff like that. I think it's a really good movie. Okay. Interesting. Um, again, I won't go into it because I don't think you've seen it. No, I have not. Mm -mm. Okay. So I found out that these guys directed The Deep House, which <laughs> got me even more excited to watch it. Nice. So then I watched it. Yes. Oh, and before we start talking about it, we should probably just remind everyone that we're going to spoil this. Yeah, of course. We're going to talk about uh, it. I'll get there. Okay, okay. All right. I haven't even gotten into spoiler territory yet, pal. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we watched it. Did I like the movie? Yes. Okay. I did. I, no, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was uh, I thought it was a very good movie. And, yes, as Andrew said, now at this point... Uh, we're going to spoil this movie. And it's this is very important because the other thing I didn't realize is I knew the movie had recently been released. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that it basically released at the very beginning of this month. Oh, November. serious? Yeah. So it's it's very new. A very new movie. Wow. Um, so uh, once again, pause this podcast if you don't want spoilers. It is on Epic's for free i think if you can stream from epics nice. but it's available for rental and purchase on itunes and prime video so anyway here we go getting into spoilers here i guess yeah eventually um I, yeah i mean i've already said it i like the movie real quick what did you think you know i think this is gonna be one where we disagree buddy oh no i wasn't a big fan Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Um, interesting. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, let's get into this. Then. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear what. So, yeah, what. I want to hear your I mean, thoughts. The first, yeah. the first thing I did when I picked this movie, mm -hmm. I didn't know that it was mostly kind of a found footage movie. Right. Right. So, you know, the movie begins. The movie is basically about this young couple. They mm -hmm. have a YouTube channel where they explore abandoned buildings and stuff. The intro is kind of, it's just, there's an intro where they go to this old factory building or something. I don't right. know what it is. Yeah, something like that. And it's creepy. Uh, but it didn't really, like, I, I watched it again and it didn't seem to serve a major purpose except to show that who these people are and what they do. That and I the only other thing I thought was it shows that he likes to scare her. Um which yeah, I think but did that really come into play that much? I guess not. I just yeah, maybe not. I don't I mean it wasn't like I guess it's it not wasn't major like the movie one. we watched yeah. last week where one of the characters really does like to jump scare somebody. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean uh, and I, I really, I, the, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't a big fan of the, of the prologue. Fair, the okay, yeah. So, I think we're going to disagree to an extent. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we're going to disagree that much. Okay. We may find some common ground here. I didn't think the intro was that great. Upon second viewing, mm -hmm. it got me interested in the movie. The first viewing, which I guess it did its job. I don't know. Right. But then. After that, the movie jumps three months ahead, and and then it, it kind of jumps back and forth between found footage and just regular cinematic movie footage. Right. And they're on their way to find this house that's supposedly perfectly preserved at the bottom of this lake. Um, they get to this this lake that's supposed to have this house at the bottom of it and there's it's a tourist spot mm -hmm. and they kind of think to themselves i guess we're not doing this but then they meet 
Pierre. Pierre. Pierre, who tells them, yes, he knows of what they're talking about, and he will take them there. Right. And Pierre is a creepy dude. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, and first of all, let's just say the, the couple that we're talking about, we're talking about Tina and Ben. Tina and Ben, yes. Tina is played by Camille Rowe, and Ben is played by James Jagger. And then they meet Pierre, who's played by Eric Savin, or right. Savin. Uh, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing these names. Uh, <laughs> but Pierre takes them to this this hidden lake right. that nobody really knows about. Pierre has a dirty beard. Pierre has a, a weathered face. Mm -hmm. Pierre stares at Tina in a very creepy way. Yeah. yeah. And first of all, I was like, why did they let this guy sit in the passenger seat? I thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean... They're very trusting of this stranger. Yeah. And then he says, oh, uh, we're going to this spot, but we're going to have to walk two miles to get to the lake. <laughs> yep. And at this point, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. I, If it was me, I, I would have been like, yeah, okay, we're cool. You know, yep. just tell us where it is and we'll try and find it. But... We're just talking about the intro to the movie. I knew this wasn't what the movie was about, right. so it didn't bother me that much. But then, yeah, then they get to the lake, and they go diving. And the rest of the movie is pretty much found footage, from what I can remember. Yeah, yep, pretty it's much. It's all, yeah. Um, they both have cameras, mm -hmm. and then they have this really cool drone camera that is an underwater drone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That... Uh, Ben has named Tom Underwater oh, yeah. Drone. Um, and then, yeah, then we get into the meat of the movie where they go into this house. They find this house at the bottom of this lake. And I wouldn't say I loved the movie at this point, but I liked it a lot. Hmm. Uh, okay. I love underwater things. Right. Which is maybe different from you. <laughs> Uh, I am a sucker for underwater movies. Uh, the Abyss, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, any movie where they go deep underwater. Um, right. I'm really, I'm a big fan of underwater things. Nice. Um, uh, I mean, let's, let's, why, what did you not like? To be honest, uh, I was bored through a lot of it i think you were bored i was bored um which is surprising because like we talked about underwater eh, well let me say this i realized yeah. during this movie i don't know if it's underwater that necessarily scares me i thought it was but i think it's more the like the intro to jaws um okay. is what scares me not knowing what's underwater that okay. kind of scares me okay. that or even you know Again, without spoiler territory, the end of Friday the 13th, the original. Okay. That yeah. kind of stuff freaks me out. Not so, knowing what's underneath not you. Not knowing what's underneath you is what scares me. So, and I and I thought it was more that and water, but then watching this one, I wasn't, I wasn't uncomfortable underwater. I actually, that's one thing I did like. There was some really cool shots underwater. Like the whole, I think it's really, I think it's fantastic that they were able to film a movie underwater. Right. I thought that was really cool. And like I said, the shots in the house were really, really cool. Um, but I guess I just kind of sat there waiting for something to happen on a lot of that movie. Um, okay. And so, yeah, I just I felt myself getting a little restless. I think that was my biggest thing. Interesting. I was, I was a bit restless during this movie. <laughs> you did finish the movie, right? I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> I will always finish our movies. I promise you that. You didn't get that bored. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. But, yeah. So, you, was, were just, you were just bored. I was bored. Um, yeah. uh, going to your fear of underwater mm -hmm. and not knowing, that's kind of, so that's kind of how I am. Oh, okay. With hauntings. Like, haunting movies scare me, but... They scare me most when you don't know what the haunting actually is. Right. Fair enough. You know, yeah. I've mentioned paranormal activity, stuff that leaves it up to my imagination. So it sounds like we're kind of the same, but with different Fears. different uh, types of, yeah, fear. That's cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, the moment you see what's under the water, you don't, you're not as scared anymore. Right. Correct. Yep. And now it's up to the movie to either be entertaining or not. Yep. And that's how the Deep House was for me. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, when they first go into the house, I thought it was pretty creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when things started to happen, so, and it's very, okay, so this movie is more uh, visual than it is mysterious. Yeah. Because once sure. they get to the, the haunting part of it, it's not just, like, it's like, zombies underwater in a way mm -hmm. um they they find this basement i mean weird things go on like they hear they hear noises they hear a voice um the the little sound thing the the audio that they're on the audio channel yeah uh they he puts on music and then it gets kind of like it gets like staticky mm -hmm. and it starts to sound weird and she's like turn that off it sounds weird <laughs> And then they find this basement, and this is where the movie, to me, got kind of cool, mm -hmm. where they find this basement where there's these people, these dead bodies yep. in the basement. Agreed. That was I liked that part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the bodies were kind of cool. Yep. They did these fake jump scares with this fish Yeah. <laughs> that I didn't really care for because I felt like they were cheap jump scares. It's like, oh, jump scare. Oh, it's just a fish. Yeah. Totally. Not a big fan of that. Um, but then, yeah, some weird stuff happens. So this is this is really cool. They find these dead bodies. They hang out a little bit longer than they should. But you understand the guy wants to – he knows that this is going to get millions of views. Correct. Yep. So he wants footage, and he's trying to get as much footage as he can. Uh, but they do eventually – after a little bit, like, yes, let's get the hell out of here. Right. All of a sudden, they can't because the window they came in through has a brick wall. Um, they're kind of trapped in this haunted house. And then the other cool thing that I did like about this movie is that there is a sense of urgency in the movie. Right. They have uh, about 60 minutes of air. So when they go under the water... They know that they have about an hour to explore before they need to come up for more air or or come up for good. And so they're in this ticking time clock the entire movie. Right. And then there's also the fact that they're being scared underwater, and when they get scared, they use up more air because right. they're breathing heavier. So we have the guy who is very good at staying calm and keeping a calm voice. But then we have uh, Tina, who every time she gets scared, she starts kind of hyperventilating, and she uses up a lot of her air. Um, so I, I I, did like that sense of urgency. Right. Yep, me too. You did? I you Yeah, were... I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like the urgency. I was going mm -hmm. to assume that maybe you didn't feel that sense of urgency because of being bored. No, nope, I liked that part. No, nope, I did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What'd you think about the dead bodies hanging? hanging I love the, the dead basement? bodies hanging. You like the dead bodies? Yep. Okay, so they end up going back down to the basement because they see this fish, and they assume that the fish is the same one that they saw earlier come out of the house. Right. So they're following this fish to see how the fish got back into the house. Right. Meanwhile, as an audience, we're sitting there just saying, you guys are effed. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you know, like there's a brick wall in front of that window that wasn't there before. You guys right. are screwed. Yep. Um, but the fish takes them back down to this basement. And, oh, the other thing I liked about the basement was that there was the huge crucifix in front of the door. Right. Yeah. Yep. Which to me said they're using this crucifix to keep something in this basement. Yep. <laughs> me too. <laughs> don't Don't get rid of it. But, you know. It's a movie, and, you know, we're watching a movie. We know that there's a haunting in this house. Right. Whereas if if you were two scuba divers exploring an abandoned house, do you really think it's going to be haunted? No. No. So let's take this crucifix down. Right. <laughs> um, but anyway, they go back down to the basement. There's this moment where the girl 
all of a sudden the bodies aren't there anymore. She's freaking out. She gets caught up in the chains. Like she says that the chains were reaching out. I thought this part wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. It was a little chaotic. Yep, I agree. Um, but then everything comes back into focus. The bodies are back. And then the movie gets creepy in a way. Like the bodies open their eyes. Yeah. And the bodies are now people under the water that have been dead and they are coming at Tina and Ben. Right. And this was a pretty cool see I thought this was a pretty cool scene because mm -hmm. they're they're trying their hardest to get out of this room and to swim away. Yeah. And they have these dead people coming towards them and every time you think that they're going to turn around and the bodies aren't and the people aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. No, they're they're there again. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And they're they're still coming. And the only way they get through them is by getting into this room and trying to close this door, which is not easy underwater. And then so here's here's the interesting thing, Andrew. Lay it on me, man. There's <laughs> going to be a small aside. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know I like when we do our movie reviews, I like to watch a movie and then rewatch it when I have time. Right. Yes. So I was I was interested to rewatch this movie. I didn't finish my second my rewatch. Oh, okay. Um, and I wasn't really super bothered to. Hmm. Okay. Which tells me that I liked this movie. I did not love it. Okay, that's totally fair. Yep. Um so all these things start happening. There's the scene with the chimney and then the cool part where she's hiding under the bed mm -hmm. and it, the feet come into the room and it's like your normal haunted house <laughs> scene, but yeah. it's underwater, which is cool and mm -hmm. crazy. And then we finally get to the end where they end up in the secret room and I'm not going to get into the details, but basically they're running out of air. They find this secret hidden room and there's actually a hole up in the ceiling. And as they're both trying to get out, the the ghost people, the zombie people, whatever they are, mm -hmm. pull Ben and they pull him down. Right. Ben is gone. Uh, and this part I liked. Yeah. I liked the ending. Tina swimming up. She's out of air. Yeah. And as was foreshadowed earlier in the movie, she is... So earlier in the movie, quick jump back to the beginning, right. where she's practicing in the tub, holding her breath. Right. Not doing the best job. Yeah. When she lies to Ben that she was able to hold her breath for three minutes, even Ben is like, that's all? Yeah. Yeah. But no, she was only able to hold her breath for like a minute and 22 seconds. Yeah. Um, so she's swimming to the top. She's made it free. She's out of the house. She's swimming to the surface. <laughs> she doesn't make it. <laughs> yep. She runs out of air before she can get up there. Such a frustrating ending. Yep. But I liked it. Yeah, okay. I liked that neither of them made it. Yep. And that's the biggest spoiler of all. Yep. Neither of them made it. Neither made it. Did um, you watch the end scene? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the bonus scene... Uh, where Pierre brings more people. Because, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess we should mention yeah, the Pierre. revelation that Pierre lived in the house before it went underwater. Right. Um, honestly, if you can remind me, Andrew. Yeah, maybe. What, <laughs> what was the history of the family that lived in that house? Uh, <laughs> Let's see how bored you were. Well, I mean, they were like... They would sacrifice people. Is that what you mean? Like, they were kind of yeah. like Satanists, I guess. Yeah, um, I guess they were, right? Yeah, and they'd sacrifice. Yeah. They'd kidnap. I think it was kids, mostly, I think. And they would kidnap kids um, and kill them. So. Yeah. But then what happened to them? Like, oh, I oh, how oh. the house flood? Um, that I don't remember, but I remember they, we see the video of what happened with the family. Like, you know, there's essentially like a mob that comes and gets them uh, yeah. and kind of kills yeah. everyone. Except you see Pierre as a young man run out the front door. He's, he gets out safe 
and that's where that's how he escaped. He they're fighting the right. family, and he books it. Um, but I don't well, remember at some how point the, there's a flood. I guess I know, and that was the part I I I do not remember how there was a flood. We never see it. We just know that it. I should have rewatched it. it. Darn it! <laughs> I should have finished it. But you have no excuse because you watched it last night. I know. I did. I have no excuse. No but excuse. None. But anyway, so Pierre. <laughs> Pierre got out of the house, but yeah, he's a, he's he brings people to this house to become part of the dead, I right. guess. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. So one other scene, yeah, there's one other scene I want to mention because I w- one thing I thought was cool, I'm sitting here imagining that, you know, this movie's going to scare the bejesus out of you. Right. right. Um <laughs> and it has a haunting, which is my thing. But then the one thing that we never mentioned is that my girlfriend, she hates snakes. Oh, no. <laughs> she hates snakes. Um, anytime a snake is on TV, she's like, nope, nope, and she looks away. <laughs> and it's the same thing. Okay, you know, with movies, my thing is hauntings, but the thing that, like, real-life phobias, yeah, like, that's snakes for her. For me, it's hypodermic needles. And mm-hmm. Black Widow spiders. Oh, poisonous yeah. Poisonous spiders. You know, these things don't... I love them in movies, mm-hmm. but they scare me in real life. Totally. That's fair. that's another conversation. Like, things that really scare us in real life, too. Man. Yeah. Like, what are our little phobias? But anyway, <laughs> so there's the moment where she has a little snake crawling up her wetsuit inside, <laughs> and it comes out into her mask. <laughs> yeah, Mary was freaking out during that scene. Aww. She was like, no, no, whoa, God. And she's like, she, yeah. I was I was so happy during that scene because it was like, yeah. I was Beautiful. like, oh, look at that. It's it, This movie's got all the triggers. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and I guess, yeah, my wife doesn't like, you know, the demonic stuff. And that, that's, no, that's in there true too. too. So it, did it, she watch it? Yeah, she, yep, she watched it with oh, me. Oh, what did she think? Uh, she was kind of like me. <laughs> We're wow. Just both See, a little bored. <laughs> which is another conversation about how the person you're watching a movie with can influence what you think of it. That's true. That is true. Um, Mary really liked it. Oh, right on. When okay. we watched it, we watched it last weekend, and she was like, "That was I liked that was good." Nice. I forget what she said, but she liked it, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, I liked it too." I'm and I'm glad I own it. Um, I think, well, I'm not going to get into this because that's part of uh, one of our three questions. So Ooh, I'm not okay. going to get into one thing I was going to talk about. Okay. But, um, well, I mean, yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> I thought, I thought, okay, um, let me look at my notes real quick. Okay, so some of the dialogue, okay. Uh, I'm going to go off on a weird tangent here. Please. I don't know if anybody out there has ever watched any video game conferences at like E3 or something. Mm-hmm. You watch them on TV and it they usually they get people up on the stage to play a game together. Right. Yeah. Or they have a video of people playing a game together and they have this fake banter where the people are like talking to each other as – as people are supposed to when they're playing a game online together. Right. Like, hey, watch out for that guy over there in the foxhole. But it always is the worst because it's canned, <laughs> yeah. it's it's clearly pre-written, and it's just so fake. And I'm totally. like, I'm always watching and saying nobody sounds like that right. when they play games. <laughs> um, and that's kind of like there's dialogue throughout the movie of Ben and Tina talking to each other through their whatever headsets they have on mm-hmm. inside their inside their outfits. And it got a little – at times it was good, but at times it sounded forced. Yeah. It kind of sounded like that fake banter. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of cheesy at times, and I was like, eh. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's – I mean, that's about it. Yeah. I liked I liked a lot of it. Fair. That's good. That's fair. I think that's what. What about you? Keep going. No, I, I, like I said, there was uh, some of those underwater shots in the house were great. 
like right when they first go in and they're in the attic and you see that doll floating and some yeah. of that I was just like, oh, this is really creepy and eerie and I like it. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it was a cool shot. The doll like kind of floated out and it yeah. was in front of the drone's spotlight. Yep. I thought and that was cool. Yeah, that was neat. Yep. And, um, you know, but then I felt like, like I said, it just, we kept getting shots like that, which again, I I know the whole movie's underwater, but they'd go into another room and I'd go, okay, this is where things are going to go crazy. And then it didn't. And then they go in another room and I go, okay, things are going to get crazy. And then it didn't. And they kept doing that, I felt like. And I was going, okay, okay, well, I hope something happens in this movie. <laughs> so, so what they were doing mm-hmm. was trying to build tension. Right. But it was not building tension for you. It wasn't. I, I more was getting frustrated that nothing was happening. I felt like, and I, I felt like, too, we had already had a whole introduction. We had that whole um, prologue. We had Pierre. We had the, you know, when they go to the tourist trap. We had already had all this stuff. I was to the point where I go, I want, this is a horror movie. I want to see something, at least, that's going to maybe kind of freak me out or get me in the m- in the mood. Um, yeah. And so by then, I just was kind of sitting there going, well, when are we, is is there anything going to happen? I mean, it's, are we going to see some creepy stuff? Or um, Okay, so then tell me how you felt when things did start to happen. Because obviously, it's all like kind of tension building until they get to the basement. Right. Uh, the Or the door past the kitchen. Right. With the dead bodies being suspended by chains. So th- at that point, the movie does become a haunted house movie. True. So how did you feel after that moment? Well, I really liked that scene. I loved seeing the bodies kind of floating there. I think that's creepy. I like that they had those weird masks on their face. Like, I just, I I really, the aesthetic in that room was very eerie, very creepy, and I was totally on board. Um, Okay. Once they started moving around, like you said, I mean, we get to, when they're chasing um, uh, Tina and Ben, and their cameras are kind of shooting behind them, and you still see them chasing them. I thought that was pretty cool. But then I kind of, again, I, it's one of those things where I'm more, like you and I, I'm more scared when I don't know what is there. Right. Now that I've seen these zombie people, I kind of go, okay, well, I, I'm not as scared. I'm not as freaked out because they're just, it's it's zombies, I guess, essentially. So um, it was still, like, it was fun, but I wasn't freaking out. I just go, well... It's zombies, okay. you know, if you if you really want, I guess you can swim away or I don't know. Um, there was a couple shots, though. There was one when we first, before we see them, we had, I think it was before we see them. Maybe it was after, but they weren't alive yet. Ben has the camera on his face, or Tina's recording Ben, and you see the ghost girl behind him swimming up. Oh, that yeah, was yeah, a good yeah. shot. I like the that. The daughter. The daughter, yes. I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. Um, and that was kind and of, then she's just gone and then she's gone. Yep. She's just gone. But I thought that was a really neat shot. Um, and then my other thing too was, I don't know. I just thought the way they were moving and I talked with Cindy about this. It looked like it was just people underwater. I felt like if it's, <laughs> if it's ghosts and again, they filmed this underwater. You can only do so much. I get that. But if it's ghosts, maybe if they had kind of creepier movements or if they were faster or if, you know what I mean, that would have scared me a little more. That would have been a little more creepy. But it's just people kind of walking in slow motion underwater, which I think is the reason why zombies don't really scare me. It's the same thing. They're so slow. And but you love zombie movies. I, I do love zombie movies. That's true. So um, if, you, if you thought of this as maybe a type of a zombie movie... I might not yeah. just ghosts, but zombies. That might be a little better, I guess. Because <laughs> what I'm hearing, yeah. Andrew, <laughs> is that you were disappointed that it wasn't more scary. True. Yes. So if you look past the fear, because we've watched movies that aren't scary, and we've we've given them our fun with horror seal of approval. True. That's true. So if you look past it as just a good haunted house movie that's maybe not very scary. Mm-hmm. Would that help, or is it still just boring to you? I think it it might help a little, but I still think it's it was kind of boring. I still would think it was boring. I think. Um, Okay. Um, real quick, what did you think of the ending? 
I wasn't a fan. Not not, not the bonus, but no, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Dying. I was hoping. You know me. Like I, I like a happy ending. <laughs> so I was hoping, like you know, this the, that it would be her way to get out of that and kind of overcome or be able to beat that time that she had at the beginning. I thought that would be really cool. She's gonna make it you know, defy mm-hmm. all odds, and then doesn't, and then it ends. And I was like, ow, oh, shoot. <laughs> I was really hoping she was going to get out of there. <laughs> so it was fine, and I, there are some movies where I'm totally on board with an ending like that, but this one I just was like, oh, she was so close. Come That's on. That's fair. Um, and actually, I did not know that you usually like a happy ending. Oh, okay, yeah. I knew, I, I knew that you that you sometimes aren't fan aren't a fan of ambiguous endings. That's true. That's true. But this wasn't an ambiguous ending. This was definite. The ghosts got him, and then she just get, didn't get out in time. Right. And it's frustrating. It's it's one of those endings, like, she's almost there, too. Yeah, so exactly. Like, oh. But see, I, I like that. Yeah. I, I'm and like, oh, man. Uh, you know, I wanted her to survive, too. Right, right. But... Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't mind. The mm-hmm. only thing I didn't like is that I wasn't sure whether she just ran out of breath or if she got the bends. Because oh yeah, that was the other thing. And and movies kind of leave this away. They they ignore this a little bit. But when you're that deep, right? They even mention in the movie that they have to have time to decompress. You're right. You're right. But she has no time. She's just swimming. So I was wondering if maybe she got hit by the bins too. That's true. That's a good point. That's a really um, good point. Uh, and that's what I kind of thought happened to her. But it, the movie doesn't really make it clear whether she got hit by the bins or if she just simply ran out of air. Right. And or both. That's a good point. But I I didn't mind it. Yeah, it just it wasn't my favorite. Now I'm making it. Okay. A, that's fine. And I'm totally making it sound like a negative again. That's not my intention. It's just that's what I didn't like. There were things, like I said, some of the shots <laughs> underwater were great. I loved the drone. I thought that was a really cool um, aspect of the movie. I thought that was kind of a cool way to film things. Yeah. You know that maybe wouldn't have been filmed otherwise. I thought that was smart. Um, and and I there were, I did write down that there were moments the drone made some was making weird like noise noises, mm-hmm. nope, nope, nope. Right. Um, weird noises, and uh, it was like going like wee, mm-hmm. and it was like it, it added to the haunted aspect of it. True. Yep. You're right. And I kind of dug that. One other thing. And, oh, go ahead. Oh, go no, ahead. No, 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 no. One other thing. No, I was just gonna say one one other thing I really liked. This is just something silly. But uh, this takes place in France. And yeah. she speaks French. She speaks English for the yes. most of the movie, but she and Pierre will speak French every once in a while to each other. But the way she pronounced Illinois, I loved. She was <laughs> like, Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> and I, was, I just was like, oh, that's really cute. <laughs> so, silly, but made me laugh. Um. The last thing I want to say can wait for our three questions. Okay. So, well, should we let you want yeah, to jump into our three questions? Let's jump into them. All right. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Question number one. And this one will be an interesting one, I guess. But, uh, Scotty, what was your favorite kill or death in this movie? Well, I mean, there's only really two. Right. Because I don't, I don't know... That we can really count the people that are already dead, right? Uh, I would say Camille uh, Camille Rowe as Tina, yeah, at the end because you either you either have Ben's death or Tina's death, and I thought Tina's was just frustrating and heartbreaking. She was almost there; she right. didn't make it. I thought, I thought that was. Uh, the, you know, it's not my. F- I can't. It's hard to call it my favorite. Right, right. Because it's not a death that I liked. Right. But I, I appreciate that death because of the emotion it made me feel. Right. You know. Yep. Fair. Different than like a fun kill in a in a slasher movie, but right. This one was a heartbreaking ending, and for that, it gets my vote. What about you? I'm gonna agree with you on that. Even though I didn't like that she died, obviously, in that yeah. way. I would. I liked her, or I appreciated. I guess her death over Ben's, who who just kind of gets stabbed or 
pulled down or whatever by the, yeah, the yeah. zombies. So, um, yeah, I would say Tina as well. Of the he two. got stabbed and pulled down. Right, right. So, I mean, yeah, that, I guess that's kind of the more fun death. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this, again, these are interesting questions for this movie, I think. But what, yeah. in your opinion, was this movie scary? So, I think I think we'll disagree a little bit on this. I okay. did have some tension. Okay, fair. Um, first of all, mm-hmm. this is where I want to give... A major shout out to the to the technical achievement of this movie. Right. They did not want to use CG. So this oh, entire nice. movie was shot in a tank underwater. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. There was no like fake underwater things. This was all shot underwater, which is amazing. Yeah. The ghosts were not real actors. They the people that played the moving ghosts mm-hmm. were free divers. Oh, cool. They were people that can hold their breaths for long times. They go under the water, they shoot their scene, and then they come back up. Wow, that's So cool. those were real people without any scuba gear on. So I think this movie technically was very impressive. Absolutely. I agree with that. But, <laughs> but as we were saying, when you see, I did like the tension. Mm-hmm. I was not bored. I liked the buildup because I was wondering what was going to happen in this particular underwater haunted house. Right. There was some tension there. Um, there was a there was a couple little points where I was like, "Ooh, f- creepy." <laughs> and they get down to the basement, and you're dealing with demonic stuff. You're dealing with these dead bodies, and I thought that was creepy as hell. So there was some fear in there. But once they came alive, once mm-hmm. they started moving, like you've said, uh, it it kind of stopped being too scary for me. Fair. I felt some tension, wondering if they were going to survive this experience, but I wasn't I wasn't scared, and it definitely didn't stick with me after the movie. Yeah. Um, but it it did it did cease to be scary when 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 it became more visual. And that's how I am with movies. I've told you about The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. Um, Half of that movie is a haunting where you don't see much. The second half of that movie is a special effects extravaganza. And I've always said that the first half of The Exorcist, to me, is more scary than the second half. Fair. And that's how I felt about this movie. I I completely agree with you. (laughs) (laughs) I Yeah, I mean... Like it, it didn't scare me, but I'm the same. Like like we said, I mean, it's the same thing. Once they came to life, it was like, okay, that's less scary. But there were there were definite moments of um, eeriness. How did you feel, scare wise, when they mm. first went underwater? Because when they first go underwater, I thought that was pretty creepy. It's very there's a lot of uh, sediment under under the water, low visibility. Right. The visibility gets a little bit better, but how were you when they first went under the water? I would say that was probably the creepier part for me is when they first went under um, okay. because of that low visibility. And then when they get like to the mausoleum at first, yeah. that was creepy. Again, nothing. I didn't. That was a moment where it's they're looking in the mausoleum and it's just pitch dark inside. And I went, ooh, I don't know what's in there, but I don't like it. <laughs> um so that was scary. That part was definitely creepy to me, uh, and a little it gave me a little anxiety. Okay. Um, but yeah, then. But again, overall, I would say to me, it, 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 you know, I'm not gonna be losing sleep over this one. I'm not gonna be <laughs> having nightmares or anything. This was. It just wasn't too scary. Or to me. so you think. Right. <laughs> Cut to. You've only tonight. slept one night since You're watching right. this movie. <laughs> I'll text you tomorrow. I'll be like, I could not sleep last night. <laughs> I had a dream I was stuck in a house underwater. <laughs> I hate that movie now. Yep. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so then, question three, my man. Did you have fun with horror? Uh, yes. Nice. Yes, I did. It, it Once once it ceased to be scary, mm-hmm. I still thought it was a very fun movie. Okay. And I'm sorry. I want to go back. Yeah, I want to go back. There was something I meant to mention. 
uh, because there's a whole reason I was bringing up the technical achievement of them filming underwater. <laughs> right. So the technical achievement was amazing, mm -hmm. but the un the side effect, and this is something you touched on, mm -hmm. is that they just move slower underwater. Right. And that kind of took some of that fear away. Yep. Agreed. So yeah, I meant to I meant to mention that in the last in the second question. No, yep. That's uh, so true. But yeah, I yeah. Um but at the same time, when that happened, I did have fun with the movie. I was having fun seeing what they were going to do in this house, if they were gonna get out of it. Mm -hmm. Um what they were going to do next in this underwater house. So I had I had a lot of fun with this movie. And even though I wasn't gung ho on watching it again right mm -hmm. away, I think it's definitely a movie I will enjoy watching again in the future. Fair. Okay. Did you have fun with horror, Andrew? Oh man, you know, this is one where I'm 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 gonna say I did not. I didn't really did have not. fun with horror on this one. Not a movie you think you'll watch again anytime soon. No, I don't think so. Um I can totally respect it. I think it's brilliant that they did film the whole thing underwater again there was some good for it but overall i didn't really have much fun okay yeah <laughs> well there you go there you go that was the deep house yes look at this what's with all the video care it's film see bright wait there was lots of film in the kids' bedroom, too. What kind of stuff were they filming? Okay. Uh, so that was our discussion of The Deep House. Yes, sir. And as we promised at the beginning of the episode. Yes. As we do every week. Yes. Andrew, it is time for you to let us know what our next movie is going to be. Yay! Okay, so... The episode we're filming this obviously before the day it comes out. Uh, this will be out on Tuesday. This episode right now, oh. which is oh the episode. <laughs> Sorry, the yes, yeah, that we're filming, or filming, <laughs> recording right now is going to be airing on Tuesday the thirtieth, and that's my birthday. Yes. Yay! Yay! And so I wanted to to pick a movie that I've wanted to watch for quite some time that I thought would be a fun birthday week movie. Um, okay. So I've been holding on to this one for a bit. This one's a very famous movie, and again, one that I've seen clips of, but I've never watched the whole thing, and I've seen some very famous clips. Um, <laughs> so let me ask you something, Scotty. Oh, I will answer you. Are you a fan of space? I love space. Yeah? Do you also like clowns? Oh, <laughs> I really? know you recently bought this, so my pick really? is 1988's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Nice. I've never seen this movie, man. And, and I have not watched forever. it. I did recently purchase it mm -hmm. during in October. It was on sale on iTunes, and I, I thought, you know, I've never seen this movie. I feel like I should have seen this movie, so I'm going to buy it for five bucks. Nice. And I thought you had seen it for some reason. I've seen... It was another one of those ones where I thought I had, and then I realized I hadn't. <laughs> I realized okay. I think I've only seen some of like the famous clips. And, and I definitely haven't seen it, so. Oh, right on. I do like clowns, and I do like space. All right. <laughs> I'm so really, I, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping I will enjoy killer clowns from outer space. Me as well. And I looked it up, too, to see kind of where to stream it or... Because I know I've seen this before on Shutter, and I know I've seen it on Amazon Prime. Unfortunately, yeah. right now it's only um, rental, so it's not only streaming rental. anywhere. But you know, Amazon has it for three ninety nine to rent. iTunes three ninety nine. You can rent it on YouTube. Um, so if, if it's, you, it's definitely not on Shutter anymore. It's at at least the app that I look at is not showing it on Shutter. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess double check <laughs> if, you're, if you really want to watch, but I it's it's not showing up as as being on there right now, which yeah, is surprising. Um, I'm looking it up. Uh, it looks like well, it does look like if you have Cinemax, <laughs> uh, Max Go, 
Okay. It looks like it might be there. Okay. Um, and I think you can also subscribe to Cinemax through Prime Video. Right. You are right. So I don't know if you if you just ha if you guys happen to have Cinemax Go or Cinemax. Right. It looks like it might be streaming there. Otherwise, yeah, as you said, you can rent it uh, or buy it on Apple TV, Prime Video, Vudu, YouTube, uh, whatever whatever you use. It's it's there. Yep. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty interested to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's been like I said, it's been a one on my list for a little while now. So yeah, and it's it's yet another movie. <laughs> that is on my list because of either Waxwork Records or Mondo releasing the soundtrack. Nice. Uh, it's it's you know there Waxwork is supposed to release it this year. Oh, okay. I'm not sure it's going to happen because of all the shipping delays that's affecting everything basically. Right. Uh but it was on their list of movies that they were releasing the soundtrack to. And I actually follow the composer, John Masari. Nice. Uh, and we've mentioned uh, they had... In they Hellfest. had, Yeah, in Hellfest, they had John Masari compose a piece of music for when they're in the, hell, uh, the clown. They called it the Killer Clown Scare Zone, <laughs> which was cool. That is cool. It's not the music from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but... Uh, it, it's some music that he composed. And so, yeah, I'm I'm very much looking forward to hearing the music in this movie. Right. Uh, as well as just watching the movie. So Sweet. I predict that neither of us will be scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I think you're right. That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to take that. Question that number two. Bad. Yeah, right. Did this movie scare you? No. Yeah, we can probably just cut that one out for next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're gonna ask. Oh, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure. <laughs> oh man! Yay! Well, okay. cool. I'm I'm excited that you haven't seen it either. That's exciting. Another episode in the books. In the books, man. We did it. Episode seventeen. 17. My lucky number. <gasps> That's right. Your lucky number. And your lucky number was four. Four. Yes. Four. Why is it four? Did you say? I didn't. You know what I think it was? Uh, or I know what it was. Was uh, the Harry Potter books. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, I just had a, I had a brainwave with you just now. Did you really? <laughs> As you were saying that sentence. Yeah. When you said, you know what I think it was? And all of a sudden, Harry Potter popped into my head. <laughs> and I was like, and then, bam, you said Harry Potter. I was about to even joke and say, what, Goblet of Fire? Oh, my gosh. That's weird. That is that's weird. weird. We're on this wavelength, dude. That's awesome. That's I truly awesome. believe that there is there, we do have latent psychic powers that our brain doesn't know how to use. I totally get that. I'm all about that. Oh yeah. So we yeah, finish each other's sandwiches. Yes. Oh Nailed come it. on, Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Wait, is that from Beauty and the Beast? No, it's from uh, Frozen. Frozen. <laughs> Dark. However, I will say, I used to <laughs> say that all the time before Frozen, so they took it from me, and I expect residuals. Did you like Frozen? I really did like Frozen. I liked Frozen, too. Yeah, it was cute. <laughs> Next week on Fun With Horror, <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> uh, so, we are on social media. That's true. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter, at FunWHorror. We are on Facebook, the Fun with Horror Facebook group. Nice. Um, and yeah, and we are, you can also email us, anybody out there, feel free to email us, funwithhorrorpodcast at gmail.com. Yes. If you have any requests, heck, send them our way. Heck yeah. Can't promise we'll watch them. Right. But <laughs> we always we always love requests. No, seriously, we've, we've done a couple of movies that were requests, and mm -hmm. we love them. Um, yeah, just let us know what you think. Uh, Please. And yeah, we love you all. We do. We love all of you. Please uh, contact us. We'd love to chat. Yeah. All right. So that, yeah, episode 17. Episode 17, man. It's it's done. It's done. It's all over. Right. <laughs> well, I love you, buddy. I love you too, buddy. This was and, awesome. Uh, yeah, have a good week. Have a good week with your killer clowns. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. You all too. Right. <laughs> All right, episode 18 next week. Woohoo!
next week. Killer clowns from outer space. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.